My name is Krishna Pandit. I'm from Kaiserslautern, Germany. I like pushing myself to the limit. Outside of work, you're likely to find me in the forest. I am a serial marathon runner where I push my body to the limit. I've been with Siemens Mobility for 10 years. Currently, I'm working in the group that deals with cybersecurity in trains. And what I find fascinating is the wide variety of topics that are covered. On the one hand, it is a hard technical competition with attackers who are trying to break our software. But on the other hand, there are also many laws. I call that the text component of it. And these two, they don't necessarily match. Hacking the train in the test center is always a special experience. What I find very impressive there is a camaraderie among the workers. And that is for me, who has spent the entire professional life in an academically oriented setting, that is a very special experience. Looking at the world around me, if the attackers go to the trains, then we have to be there and we have to prevent it. I am convinced about the technology that we create. And looking at cybersecurity and beyond, Siemens Mobility delivers the most reliable trains in the world, period. Think of a train. What is it? A machine, right? But when you take the lid off, what you'll see is inside hundreds and hundreds more machines. It's a complex system, even a system of systems. And of course, that makes it really hard to secure it. How we can achieve that, and also without it costing the world, I'll discuss with Krishna Pandit. Krishna, great to have you. Thanks, it's a pleasure to be here. And Krishna, your, your role is your product and solution security expert at Rolling Stock um, at Siemens Mobility. And I can see you brought a huge pile of paper. Like, How many pages is that? This is approximately a thousand pages. This is a printout of the most important cybersecurity standard, the IEC 62443. Okay, and, and I need to read all of them if I want to build a train. Yes, that and more, because what we can see in the world today is that um, cybersecurity is gaining importance, lawmakers are reacting, and all over the world, laws and standards are just mushrooming. Well, it sounds like a nightmare. If we have lots of different standards in different countries, does that make trains more or less secure? I would say more secure because it forces companies to deal with cybersecurity. Now, we at Siemens, we don't need any external motivation because we've been dealing with cybersecurity for many years. It has been a priority for many years. Uh, and also what we have at Siemens is we have many different industries, many different business units, and we actually have meetings where all the experts from the different business units come together and share best practices, and that has advantages for everyone, also the train. Okay, so you, you would have somebody who tries to make a factory more secure and another person that's trying to make, say, uh, office building more secure. You would work on the train and you can learn from one another. There are yes. similarities. But then uh, still, a train is different from, say, a factory. What's specific about cybersecurity for trains? Well, on a train, there are many different systems on, bo on board. Let's start with the safety critical train control. So you have the driver in the driver's cab who pulls a lever and then we want that the wheel in the boogie actually breaks. And then we also have the train operator network. That's what you can see here. Take for example the display. And let me tell you something, like 16 years ago if I would have had the skills when I proposed to my wife I would have hacked the display and I would have put the message there, Shruti, will you marry me? Well, why not? I, I, it would actually make my day. I would find that cute. Yes, that would be a cute example, but you can also imagine messages on the display which one wouldn't want. And especially there are also countries in the world where you would get into real trouble if there were like political messages on the display. 
Okay. So what I what I take from that is it, it, my initial question was naive, just like how do you make the train secure? Because it's not just the train, their operator system and then the Wi-Fi on the train and then so they have to work together safely. Yes, there are many more systems also. There's also a connection to the cloud. Again, just look at the display and then say you have the, it says next stop Nuremberg and the connecting train to Munich is five minutes late. This information is something that has to come in real time. So th that comes directly from the cloud. That's also there. And then you already mentioned the passenger Wi-Fi. Yes, so that is another system that's on the train. And you could also have a vending machine for tickets where you suddenly have credit card information also on the train. Okay, so super complex. We have traditional methods of keeping systems safe and secure, looking at every component. Can we still use them in this new world with much more complexity? No, that does not work anymore. Like if you look at the standard that's relevant for us, there are 220 requirements. And on a train, we have approximately 100 software assets. So just mapping all of them would already lead to a combinatorial explosion over 20,000 points. So that you would so, have to check them one by one by one by one, 20,000 times? Yes. It will take you 20 years. Yes, and implement it also. At the end of the say, there's a requirement that every company needs a virus killer. If you just like flat out implement everything, you would also have to implement a virus killer into the reading light. Okay, so uh, so you're, you're saying it would be overkill and then the reading light, quite frankly, if if it didn't work, it would be inconvenient, but it wouldn't be a big deal, right? Exactly. And this is where we have to talk about cost. And nobody likes talking about cost in the context of security. But at the end of the day, we want to make rail travel more attractive because it has so many advantages for fighting climate change, but also to allow people who maybe don't have so much money to still travel and see their loved ones. And you have to see that every single security feature that we implement costs money and, at the, and you are going to see that on the ticket price of every passenger. Okay. So what's the solution? How do you make cybersecurity for trains more affordable? The solution is a risk-based approach. And there what we do is we look at the actual risks that are present in each component and um, f f implement the adequate security. Let me give you an example. We have the um, brake again. Now we uh, look at the impact. If the brake is hacked, what is the... C catastrophic well, impact. Catastrophic impact. So that means we have to... Um, find very strong mechanisms against it. And then we have the reading light. You also mentioned it already. The, the um, impact is uh, negligible, so then we can also leave the, um, like, be easy on the security. I mean, if I'm reading the final chapter of Lord of the Rings, and I end up individually feels bad, but uh, yes. not, not a big deal. So how do you call that approach again? It's, it's the risk-based approach. Risk-based. So rather, you have to look at every component, but you then don't secure every component 100%, yeah. Yeah. or as to the maximum, you just focus on the ones that are most important. Yes. So what you do is you take the, every component and you look what are the threats associated with that. And a threat I um, analyze by considering what is the impact if it is hacked and what is the likelihood that it will be, I mean, that a hacking attempt will take place. And with those, I get to a risk and then I uh, decide is the risk something that I want to accept and then I leave it the way it is or is the risk something that I cannot accept then I have to find um, countermeasures right but the interesting thing is these countermeasures they need not even be a technical solution like for example I can also have a countermeasure where I make sure that I uh, uh, train the driver to um, perform a certain action to in order to be secure. Okay, so I, I get security not only from the technology I build, it's always also about humans, and then I can add additional procedures here. Yes. Exactly. How, are, how are customers reacting to that? What do they say? Um, they are very positive about our approach, and we're getting a lot of good feed, feedback, because there is now a consensus forming in the 
industry that the risk-based approach is the only way forward in this to this complex problem. And as a matter of fact, we even have a certification for this. Why and how is that important? Well, so the customers, of course, they trust us, but it's better to have a third party independently assess the cybersecurity of our trains. And yes, we got that done. It was very hard work, but um, now we are the we were the first and to my knowledge we are also the only train manufacturer who has this uh, certification okay but we hope it's it's going to be a standard because that benefits everybody including siemens and siemens customers absolutely okay it's a bit like with 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 railways they have the same width in most yeah. countries that helps a lot yes so thank you very much, Krishna, for taking the time. And you have a, quite a bit of a schlep home with your 1,000 pages here. What, what I take away from our conversation today is that it's even more complicated than I thought. Train is really not just a machine. It's a system of systems, which is part of a wider system. And that system includes, of course, the rail infrastructure. And how do we keep that secure? This is the topic of our next panel. Thank you so much.